Folks, the San Jose Sharks are having one of the worst starts to the season in NHL history. For their first nine games of the season, the San Jose Sharks have zero wins, eight regulation losses, and one measly points with one overtime loss. This is about as bad as it gets. But how bad is this Sharks team truly? How bad could they become further down the year? And could this pain result in gain for the Sharks down the line? Well, make sure you watch till the end as we dissect every part of this Sharks team to see what's next. And that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content just like this all throughout the year. Now, the start of this NHL season has produced some amazing moments for a bunch of NHL teams, but unfortunately, the San Jose Sharks are not one of them. There have been some pretty bad teams so far. Edmonton and Gallery are both disappointed. Arizona hasn't been as good as we maybe would have predicted, but the San Jose Sharks have not just been bad. They have been embarrassingly bad so far. It's not even just the 1.0 wins in nine games, though that certainly is embarrassing. It's also the way they are losing. I mean, that game versus Washington that they just played, they were up 1-0 in the driver's seat, hanging to the third period, and then two straight, three straight goals to choke it away completely to a Capitals team that has also not been that good this year. You look at the league-wide goals scored, and right now, of course, San Jose in last place. Zero wins. You're not going to be scoring, scoring many goals, and the San Jose Sharks have shown that. In nine games, they have nine goals, and the consistency, well, I mean, it, it has been there. They've been consistently horrible in that aspect. But this was one part of this Sharks team that I thought might not be actually horrible. It has been the worst part of this Sharks roster has been that goal scoring and the complete lack of it now obviously losing logan couture for the start of the season does hurt that quite a bit but still i thought it was going to be the defense and the goal tending that was going to bring this sharks team into historic lows but so far it's been the offense being absolutely dreadful and drying up to a complete stop that has allowed the sharks to be as bad as they've been and you can see the team that scored the second least goals has been the St. Louis Blues, but they've scored 14 goals in seven games. So it's not even a comparable. While the Sharks have scored a goal per game, the Blues have scored two goals per game. That's how big of a goal the Sharks are away from the rest of the NHL. It's been that bad. Now the goal scoring has been dreadful for San Jose as well as the goals allowed. You can see right now they're tied for second to last with Carolina. 35 goals allowed. Minnesota right now, 38 goals allowed in nine games is the only team ahead of those two. But San Jose and the Dumb as well the big difference though between both carolina and minnesota is that goal score with san jose nine goals they haven't gotten to double digits with carolina and minnesota they both scored at least 30 goals plus so it's a little bit less embarrassing for them for san jose they don't quite have that excuse and look at the nhl goal differential man san jose by far in last place mostly because of the dried up goal scoring you can see a minus 26 through nine games only calgary is kind of in their stratosphere of a minus 15, but still San Jose minus 11 more than any other NHL team. It doesn't get much worse than that. And then we look at the Sharks wide scoring and poor Tomas Hurdle, man, five points in nine games played. He has been in a brutal position, really being the only driver in the San Jose team, trying his best. I mean, I was able to catch a lot of that game versus Washington. He was doing a great job defensively and everything, putting the most effort he could in, but the team around him, he just doesn't have any options to work with, and it's pretty telling. Hurdle is the only guy above three points so far in nine games and that just shows the lack of any real star tab power any real star talent on this team even players like William Eklund who are playing well aren't getting the points to really back that up so far Hurdle is the only player really putting in his part right now and even then his point scoring has dried up. you also got players that should be much better right now like Anthony Duclair has one point in nine games Mike Hoffman has been a non-factor players like Barba uh, Barabanov have been injured as well as Logan Couture which really affects that goal scoring for them but to me I thought this would have been the least of the Sharks problems heading into this year. The goal scoring would be maybe the better part of the team, even though that would definitely not be all that great. But so far, it has been the problem. It has been the worst part of this team. And even though they have dealt with injuries, that to me is the most surprising thing. I thought the goaltending, the defense would sink them into the, in, in the end and have them as one of the worst teams in the NHL, if not the worst team. But so far, that, that, that goal scoring, that consistency on offense, I mean, they've been consistently bad on offense. That's for sure. Now, the power play hasn't been that bad considering the team we're talking about here they're right now slashing at a lead 12.5 power play rate they haven't really gotten that many power play opportunities but they've scored three power play goals this year so a third of their goal scoring has come on the power play with only a total of nine goals this year i mean the power play hasn't been the worst thing in the world but it still isn't the greatest either then you go to the penalty kill which also hasn't really been that bad they're right now kind of towards the middle of the nhl with a 76.5 percent penalty kill rate which considering how bad this sharks team 
is the special teams haven't been among the worst in the NHL, which might be one of the most surprising things. But unsurprisingly, you can see San Jose among the worst in the NHL in goals allowed five on five with 22 goals allowed. Only Minnesota and Calgary are worse than them. But I mean, you look at this lineup and it's and it's impossible to think that they couldn't be bad. I mean, you got players like Fabian Zetterlund on the first line, players like Ryan Com Carpenter and Giovanni Smith and players like Mike Hoffman and Luke Kunin. I mean, this is not a lineup that sparks much inspiration, and especially with Logan Couture out, Barabanov out, two players that are top six players and have been for them for a very long time. You have a Sharks lineup that is just completely devoid of creativity, of consistency, of work ethic. Everything that could go wrong for the Sharks team has gone wrong. And now, especially on offense, it's just brutal to watch. I mean, I predicted San Jose to be the worst team in the league this year, but to me, I didn't see the offense being this dreadful. But of course, the injuries have piled up for them. And for a team that was already going to be brutal without them, now the injuries have come on and completely put up the rug under them. And it's been just tough to watch. And the defense really doesn't get much better. Fortunately for the Sharks, players like Ty Emerson, Badger Legend have come in and have done pretty solid things for them have looked like one of the best D so far for the Sharks, which I know isn't the highest bar, but still Emerson has looked pretty good. But you've got players like Market or Vlasic who have just completely gone past their prime. And unfortunately, one of the worst contracts in the NHL has sunk in San Jose in a lot of different ways. But you've got players like Kyle Burroughs who just really shouldn't be in the position they're in. Mario Ferraro playing first top pair D minutes. I mean, this is a defense that I thought was going to be a major weakness for them. And it hasn't been the worst in the league for sure. They've been better than expected, I would say. But still, Still, it's not really something that's going to be winning them many games, and their goaltenders have had to save a lot of games for them. Unfortunately, haven't really been able to save many games as they have zero wins this year, but still have been able to keep these games close. You can see for the Sharks, both Mackenzie Blackwood and Capo Kakinen have played a pretty good chunk of games, and both of them right now have a 907 save percentage, which, again, considering San Jose's position right now, is actually pretty impressive. I especially want to shout out Mackenzie Blackwood here, who has gone through so many injuries in New Jersey, so much inconsistency, was down the AHL for them didn't look good whatsoever but this year you can see right here at the top of things with that even strength save percentage he has a 921 right now which is just an incredible rate for a goaltender in his position in San Jose that's a huge bright spot and you look at it in terms of pure goals saved above expected by goaltenders if you have zero as the average right now Mackenzie Blackwood is at a 3.19 rate and right now Capo Kakinen is a straight plus three so both of these goaltenders have saved six goals plus this season for the Sharks which which is pretty miraculous. This was a position where I thought it was going to be a real downfall for San Jose will be one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why they were so bad and so bad throughout the rest of the year. But for San Jose, it's actually been a humongous point of inspiration for them at a point where they can actually grow from. But so far, San Jose's goaltending has been really the only thing keeping them from being one of the worst teams in NHL history right now. I mean, they've been in that sort of realm at this point. The offense, of course, has dried up as we know, but the goaltending has has looked pretty good. And especially in Mackenzie Blackwood's case, a goaltender has gone through so much over the past few years, I couldn't be happier for him. But to me, the biggest miracle is the fact that not, not even is he just playing well, he's playing well under San Jose's defense and San Jose's team. A Mackenzie Blackwood could have gone anywhere else if he went to a team like Carolina. Oh yeah, he plays well. That's not really the most surprising thing in the world considering Carolina systems and everything, but San Jose's and the fact that he doesn't look completely overwhelmed out there is on a game out and game in basis doing pretty solidly and looking pretty consistent it's miraculous that this is happening but it's amazing to see but to me we talk about san jose and the lack of expectations coming into this year and that was for very good reason this sharks team has been built to be bad for the next few seasons and that's exactly how it should be this sharks team for the last couple years really has been bad but not really bad enough to be a top contender in the lottery or be a, a team that's gonna be a top three in the draft or anything like that last year we saw a little bit of a step for them and of course they ended up getting will smith in the draft who's now in Boston College and looking pretty good there but San Jose could take another we, they could have taken another step and they have taken that another step to just be in the bottom of the basement exactly where they should be considering of course the old core that has already aged out in a lot of ways we've already seen a lot of players retire they still got a few guys st being strangled on there like Market or Vlasic and Logan Goodshore who are probably going to be on the outside once this young core starts to really take shape but San Jose has a pretty solid prospect pool they've added some pretty big pieces these past couple of years but this is where things get really serious for San San Jose if they're able to get a top three pick in this draft that changes everything for them especially with another draft that has another couple of stars 
in it with Macklin Celebrini and Cole Eisman. Those two players added on with Will Smith already, and San Jose's rebuild is looking a lot better. Unfortunately, with just how bad they've been, they might not get that much value for players like Mike Hoffman and players like Anthony Duclair, but I could see a situation where maybe a Duclair trade leads to maybe a third round pick or something like that if he does a little bit better in the second half and gets traded at the, de uh, the deadline. I could absolutely see something like that, but in San Jose's position right now, they're just going to be loading up for that 2024 draft, getting the most they possibly can. And really for the Sharks team, they're going to be loading up over the next few years. I don't think they're going to be a team that contends until probably like 2027 at the very least, or even sniffs a playoff spot by that point. So I think for San Jose, these next three years or so are going to be really key for their development, really key for getting players like William Eklund to the best they can be. Players like Henry Thrun and Ty Emerson on that defense looking a lot better as well. For San Jose, they still got a lot more room to grow. That defense in the prospect pool doesn't look all that great besides the guys that are on the NHL roster already. They still got a lot of room to grow in that prospect pool, but this year and how bad they've been will allow them to do that. And hopefully in a few years time, San Jose will be back better than ever. And hopefully they can finally win their first Stanley Cup. It might not happen, of course, with San Jose's cursed history, but one can hope. That really is the only problem with the rest of this roster, though, is that there's not really many guys you can really trade for much value. You, of course, have traded a lot of the guys you already could have gotten value for, like Eric Carlson, and I really don't see them trading Tomas Hurdle. This team is already bad enough and already lacking a leadership presence. Trading Tomas Hurdle, to me, would just be adding fuel to the fire. It would just be too much, honestly. Sure, you would get a lot of picks for it, but to me, Tomas Hurdle, you need to have somebody still there that can still play and can be a leader for the next core coming up, and he's still pretty young at 29 years old if you have other players like Mikel Granlin Kevin LeBanc who of course uh, was not getting any uh, any traction in a trade Mike Hoffman really a player like Anthony Duclair would be one of the few instances of a player I could see getting actual value from a trade or uh, in a trade maybe a draft pick back or something I'm not really sure how likely they will be to train one of their goaltenders right now I don't really see that happening and on the defense maybe you're able to find a trade for Jan Ruda but the, the the options are pretty limited here I don't really see San Jose being too active in the trade deadline really because they don't have a lot of guys to trade Eric Carlson was their big fish to deal and they've already dealt him send him off sending him off to the Pittsburgh Penguins and right now they're pretty barren in the guys that can actually deal which has led to of course how bad they've been they don't really have a lot of players playing well with a lot of value so they're not going to be really really be performing all that well so far we've seen that story play out with San Jose and the rest of the year is not going to look too pretty for San Jose's case I would be surprised if they're a team that gets around 30 wins they're a team that's going to be down in the dumpster how bad they will be will be the biggest question through nine games the san jose sharks have one point but if you look at it one of the worst stars in nhl history came back in 1992 for them a season that had the senators also in a horrible spot but they started out through they started out 4 15 and 1 this hockey news article actually has the wrong record for them but they started out horribly back in 1992 that is right now the bare minimum for san jose to hopefully get maybe five uh five wins in 20 games but so far almost halfway through they have zero so this san jose sharks team through 20 might have the worst start in the Sharks history, which considering some of the early expansion years, is pretty miraculous. Unfortunately, though, for San Jose, their rest of the season schedule isn't looking all that great. In the next couple of weeks, they face Vancouver, who's looking pretty good. Pittsburgh, who's looking to have some revenge. The Philadelphia Flyers have been pretty underrated this year. Then you got teams like the Oilers and Golden Knights, who are looking pretty solid. Even the Anaheim Ducks have been gotten off to a much better start this year. So there are some winnable games here, but not a lot of games for San Jose where I'm like, where I'm going to be thinking they have a massive chance or even a sliver of a chance to win. For San Jose, though, they need to start getting some momentum here because sure you want to be down in the dumpster of your san jose but you don't want to be an embarrassment they have been an embarrassment so far but so far in the next few games I don't know if it'll get much better. Let us know in the comments down below, though, what you guys think about the San Jose Sharks team and just how bad they've been. And I want to know your season predictions for them down below. How bad do you think they will be in an 82-game year? How many wins do you see them getting? Do you see them getting past 20 at this point? Is it, is it a team that'll get under that? Let us know all your predictions down below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you guys enjoyed today's video and want to see more just like it. And make sure you share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get the channel out there to everybody you guys know and click on this card for all of my hockey rings content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Thank you so much for enjoying the breakdown and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.